What a season it was. Uh, I want to let this group know what an honor it was to serve as, uh, as board chair this season. Uh, thanks to everyone for making this a meaningful experience. Uh, the video highlighted some of the things we've done this year to make progress in our education goals. We launched in 2010 a new program for economically disadvantaged families to help their young children, ages birth to five, learn the skills necessary for kindergarten. The program, Play and Learn, is sponsored by the Young Leaders Society and saw tremendous growth. At the, at the program uh, was served 120 people, a number that has now jumped to well over 800. We've got another video to show, I think. Play and Learn is a program that supports parents and other caregivers in helping their children develop and get ready to succeed in school. It was developed in 2010 and is supported by United Way's Young Leaders Society. And it helps us achieve our goal of more children ready for kindergarten. All right, we're here with the Play and Learn group today. We got me and three other Rough Riders here today. and. We're just here to help out, you know, help around the community. We think it's important. They support us at our game, so we're here to support them and have a little fun with them today. And uh, we're just really excited to, you know, hopefully make their day, hopefully have a good time with the kids. Um, at Play and Learn, we get the opportunity to help educate parents and children about what's important for brain development and body development and just being a healthy child. So a lot of this little areas that we have set up, they, they help the children to understand why it's important to have uh, their finger development with the small muscles, uh, large body development skills, as well as just creativity skills and talking skills. So each week we try to explain to the parents and to the caregivers how they can help their children excel at learning and growing and becoming a healthy child. We also around the room have a lot of little posters set up that help to explain some of the skills that the children might be working on for that week. For instance, here we have puzzles and it explains to them why puzzles are important. It's not just a way to pass time, but it actually teaches them something. And all the caregivers and parents that we have come every week they just absolutely love the interaction that the children get to have with one another and the lessons that we have during our circle time so we really appreciate everything that United Way has done to help us to maintain this program and hopefully keep it going strong for a long time and all the parents have been very excited about the support of United Way and helping play and learn grow. Well, we come every Tuesday as long as the weather is good um, it's a great place to come that's indoors and the kids can play and get to play with other kids. I recently decided to stay home after working for 17 years, so I was looking for a place that you could do some things with the kids, so it's really fun. They get to sing and do circle time and play. Thanks to the McIntyre Foundation, we also launched Read Ahead, which provides free books and helps develop the early language and literacy skills of children birth age to five. Uh, we now have over 500 kids enrolled in that program. Our youth programs have been expanded through the Youth Achievement Corps grant and support from a private donor. The United Way team isn't just winning 10, 10 games each season. They're using the revenue from those games to make a difference in our community. We couldn't do it alone. Thanks to everyone, I would like to take a moment to recognize some of last year's players. As I call your name, please stand so we can recognize you. Tom Peffer and Carol Reisner, who chaired the Tocqueville Society. James and Barb Klein, who chaired the Sinclair Society. Brian Fries and Colleen Hepner, who chaired the Corton Society. Sue Lauder, chair, and Ashley Ernst, vice chair, chaired the Women's Leadership Initiative. Brandy Mueller, Chair, and Wendy Nielsen, Vice Chair, who chaired the Young Leader Society. Shelley Parbs, Leadership, Labor Leadership, sorry. All right, I'd also like to thank last year's officers. Greg Niemeyer, Vice Chair, and Planned Giving. Dick Lorenz, Treasurer. Brad Hart, Secretary. Gary Chaddock, Strategic Planning. Cindy Dietz, Nomination. Marianne Osborne, Community Impact Chair. Tim Kittner, Campaign Chair and Mark and Kathy Gullickson, Campaign Vice Chairs.
What a great group. I can't thank you all enough for your efforts. Uh, let's take a look who's been traded for this uh, next year. <laughs> By that I mean who's rotating off the board of directors. Uh, when I call your name, please stand so you can be recognized. Joan Ani with Transamerica, thank you for your support. Terry Romig with The Kitchen Sink, thank you Terry. Larry Helling with Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust. Larry's been board chair, served in the Strategic Planning Committee, the Human Service Campus Board, and chaired the Finance Committee. It's a full-time job. John Bickle with Shuttleworth and Ingersoll. Thanks, John. John chaired the 2009 campaign in one of the toughest uh, with, between the uh, economy and the flood, did a great job for us. Rue Patel with General Mills. Rue's been here forever. Thanks, Rue. He's not here? I'll thank him privately. And Cindy, who I, I followed in her footsteps, tough feet to follow. Thanks, Cindy, for your nine years of service and advocacy. And finally, uh, Jim Tinker, retired from Mercy Medical Center, is rotating off the board of trustees as well. I'd like to recognize Jim. Kevin, could you come up and help me with some uh, presentations and a little presentation for you? We're not trying to turn back the time for United <laughs> Way, but we have a, a little token of appreciation for you to put on your desk to remember your time serving as the board chair for last year. Thank you. Really appreciate it. <laughs> now we want to move on to our MVPs. Each year we recognize those that provide exceptional service, leadership, and philanthropic commitment to the community through the Lynn Nichols Award, the John B. Northcott Award, the Community Philanthropist Award, and the Spirit Award. The Nichols Award recognizes a staff member from a United Way partner agency for his or her outstanding professional leadership, service, and collaboration. This year's recipient is the late Dr. Reese Jones. Dr. Jones, it was from the St. Luke's Dental Health Center. He improved the dental health of thousands of young children and developmentally disabled children and adults living in East Central Iowa. Dr. Jones died unexpectedly in April 2012. So we congratulate Dr. Jones and here to accept the award is his wife, Valerie Kittick. Our next award is the Northcott Award. This, this recognizes an individual that has given outstanding volunteer service to United Way. The individual portrays strong leadership and contributes positively towards the betterment of our entire community. This year's recipient of the Northcott Award is Cindy Deep. As the board chair in 2010, she led the organization through the monumental move into this new human services campus. She's been a key link and enthusiastic supporter of the United Way and Rockwell Partnership. Over the last nine years, she has helped lead the Rockwell campaign, which has contributed over $17 million to United Way and the community. The development of the Corridor Volunteer Program and the United Way Volunteer Center were prompted by Cindy and Rockwell's interest in dedication and volunteerism. Today we have over 2,400 volunteers that are served through the United Way Volunteer Center and the Retired Senior Volunteer Program was recently incorporated into the volunteer management. Cindy, we thank you for your service over the last many years. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. 
Next, Jack Evans with the Hall Prime Foundation and the United Way trustee will present the next award. I'd like to uh, ask Bob and Beth Alsop to come to the podium, please. Bob and Beth Alsop have been community philanthropists for their entire life. As long-standing De Tocqueville Society members, Bob and Beth exemplify the spirit of giving. They have been diamond donors to the United Way and are original members of the United Way Touch Tomorrow Society. Bob and Beth give to many charitable organizations, the Kirkwood Foundation, the Indian Creek Nature Center, Junior Achievement, Boy Scouts, and Westminster Church. Bob has been a Junior Achievement Laureate, and Beth has served on the Kingston Hill Board. As quiet but very effective philanthropists, the Alsops have instilled giving into their family legacy, and their son Steve is also active in the community. Bob remains active in the Cedar Rapids Rotary Club and is a Paul Harris Fellow. The Alsops love the Cedar Rapids community and share their passion for this region through their generosity to many nonprofits and their commitment to social change. To keep up with the theme, I'd like to make the observation that Bob hit a home run the, the, 60 years ago, the day after tomorrow. <laughs> On Thursday, they're celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary, so this is our present <laughs> to you. Our next award is the Spirit Award, and that's presented to a company that demonstrates exceptional philanthropic commitment and community involvement. This year's award winner is Nextera Energy, Dwayne Arnold, and their employees. In 2008, when Palo was flooded, Nextera Energy employees showed an enormous amount of resiliency. While some companies had to cancel or postpone their United Way campaign, the employees of Nextera continued on. While their standard work hours ended, many of them helped a neighbor in need, a family member left with next to nothing, or a stranger needing a listening ear. Over the past several years, the Nextera campaign has steadily increased their contributions. And this past year, they moved up on our top 50 list from number 19 to number 13. This year they had an annual holiday train ride and they uh, donated the profits to United Way and that was one of the very special events of last year's United Way campaign. United Way encourages their employees of Nextera and also their retirees to participate as well. Someone from Nextera here. Okay. Congratulations to all of our great team members. We're running out of time, but let's take a quick look at the future. A few of the highlights of what we have to look forward to ahead. We are embarking on a comprehensive strategic planning process to set the vision for the next five years. You know, we've had a, a lot happen in this last five years, so it's gonna be a lot of fun to look forward to what's possible over the next five years. The year 2014 is the centennial celebration for our United Way. We are already beginning the planning process for a great year of celebration. Of course, we will continue to share progress on our five community goals, identify new and emerging needs, and any special projects that we need to help fill the gaps in our social service community. Also, we have a $5 million endowment campaign that we hope to reach by our centennial. We look to have a more diversified revenue base in addition to our workplace campaigns, grants, donor initiatives, and our endowment. And finally, we have a vibrant, innovative, and creative communication strategy. I think you all agree with all the media we've had and everything that Christoph has helped put together. That's a, area that's gonna be a lot of fun as we look forward to the next couple of years. So we're excited about the upcoming season and we look forward to your support.